Well, we certainly know this much by now, and that is the New York Jets have convinced themselves they're in win-now mode. As they couldn't wait this offseason to move on from Zach Wilson. And if you say, well, they technically didn't, for all intents and purposes, they did, and you damn good and well know it. And whether it was too quick to do that or not, the simple fact of the matter remains is that Zach Wilson didn't do enough to keep his job, and the coaching staff was looking for any opportunity they could to move the fuck on from him. And they have, right? And then they go and they make the big trade to go get an end of his career Aaron Rodgers, thinking that their window is now thinking that he's going to be the guy to make all the difference in the world. Must not have watched him in Green Bay this past season. That's all I'm saying. So, with that, the Jets absolutely, now that they've made the trade for Aaron Rodgers, as long as Aaron Rodgers is playing for the Jets, they're in win-now mode, and it puts a tremendous amount of pressure on general manager Joe Douglas, head coach Robert Sale. Like, you got to deliver the goods now. Winning nine games, being in playoff contention, that can't be the fucking goal. You have to be convinced that Rodgers is good enough, that you put the right pieces around him, that you can threaten the Bills and the Dolphins in that division, and you can go make a run in the playoffs and contend for a Super Bowl. Whew, good luck with that. So, with that in mind, for a team that's in win-now mode, this draft was about quality of picks versus quantity of picks. You know, obviously... You know, you had some of the shifting in round one with this deal. They moved back a couple of spots. Pick swap, basically, with the Packers. Gave up the second rounder. Like, they needed impact, right? And Will McDonald in round one, probably for a number of people, was a bit of a surprise pick. Like, I'm not surprised he went in round one. I thought his draft range would be somewhere from, like, 20 to 28, so it was a surprise pick, but when you think about McDonald and the skill set that he brings, in particular his, his quickness off the edge, his ability to bend the edge, even though he's a little undersized, he really fits Saleh's defense. So it makes sense. You're trying to go and get a guy in round one that you feel like can be a year one impact player. And they certainly believe that Will McDonald IV can be that year one impact player. I mean, personally, I thought they're better players on the board. And, you know, you went and got Aaron Rodgers. I would have defaulted to picking an offensive player if possible. But I could, I could look past that if you get like a real impact defensive player. But I thought there were both players better on the board on both sides of the ball for the Jets than McDonald at this point. So... I wasn't that blown away by their day one pick. I was surprised. I didn't think it was a massive reach, mind you, but you know it certainly wasn't a great value pick. Let's put it that way. Um, you look at day two. They traded Elijah Moore, who was a former second rounder for pick seventy four and pick seventy four for pick forty two, and that pick forty two was sent to Green Bay as part of the Aaron Rodgers deal. So you're taking a former second round pick. Flipping him along with a third round pick to get back a second round pick, then you end up trading away. Less than ideal for sure. Um, at least we could say in terms of that day two pick that they did have, that they did use, I'd expect Tipman to be a year one starter at center. He's got decent upside and you're investing on protecting Aaron Rodgers and you need to do that. So that worked out. But... You know, not a lot of help, again, coming from day two. Although, if you look at this, like I said, sticking to what I talked about before, this is about quality for the Jets over quantity for the Jets. If McDonald comes in as a rookie and he's like an eight or nine sack guy, you got some year one impact out of him. If Tittman comes in and is a solid starter at center in year one, you got decent impact from him. Now you're looking at your first two picks, giving you a decent amount of impact. Like that's what you needed out of this draft class for a team that's clearly put themselves into a win-now position. As this wasn't going to be about depth or quantity of picks. You're not going to overwhelm anybody or shake up the world. Um, as you go to day three, you, know, you look at Carter Warren, and I see a guy that could be a starting left tackle in the NFL. You know, At the minimum for this team could be a swing tackle. He's got to be able to stay healthy, though. 
but he does have starting tackle upside at the NFL level. So in terms of like day three picks, he was a pretty solid one, as was Israel Abanacanda. I think he's going to be a really nice compliment to Brees Hall in the backfield, brings a speed element. Like he's a guy, if you get him going downhill, he runs with some ferocity and he certainly runs with some speed. So a couple of more picks invested on the offense, and if they give you anything in 2023, it's an added bonus. Um, Barnes, who they took, I think, as a linebacker, could be a special teams guy, versatile backup, but at a minimum, special teams contributor. And yeah, and you know, you talk about guys you bring in and make an impact, guys can come in in year one and make an impact on special teams. Um, Bernard Converse, I think, fit their system as an outside corner, might have a chance to stick, but wouldn't be surprised if he didn't. Zach Kuntz, who they took in round seven, is that tight end three type with a little bit of upside. I think he was certainly worth a flyer. But again, like for the Jets, it was about quality over quantity. And, you know, some of this draft is ultimately tied directly to Aaron Rodgers, right? They moved down two spots in round one. They gave up pick 42 in a sixth rounder as part of the package to get Aaron Rodgers. That is what it is. McDonald could be the marquee edge rusher that they've really needed. Um, and they're going to need him to be, right? I just got to call it out. Like, it was a bit of a gamble to take him there at 15. Like I said, I thought there were better players on the board on both sides of the ball. But I can see the upside, and I did not think it was a tremendous reach. But if McDonald could come in and be a really nice contributor off the edge in year one, you've got Tittman comes in. And he's a contributor, a starter at center, and a solid one in year one. And now you feel a little bit better about the Jeff's draft. I'm not sold on them being contenders right now by any stretch of the imagination, but they would have come out of this draft with two year one starters that could make a difference for them. With a couple of guys that they were able to get in day three, thinking about Warren, thinking about Abana Kanda, that can contribute. Like I said, I think Warren can be a starting tackle in the league. You know, Abana Kanda at a minimum, is a really good backup for Brees Hall. And for a guy like Aaron Rodgers, you're bringing him in. You know, you can't expect him to be chucking it all over the field at age 40. Like, you're going to have to be able to run the ball. I was able to help him, you know, perform in 2020, 2021, you know, be back-to-back -back MVP in part because of Rodgers could really pick and choose his spots because of the great Green Bay Packer running game. So if you're the Jets, you kind of want to mirror that style. So for this draft, if McDonald and Tipman contribute right away, it's a pretty solid draft. They get anything out of Warren and Abanda Kanda in 2023, it's an added bonus. But what this draft ultimately comes down to, it was leveraged in part to bring in Aaron Rodgers. And the Jets better hope that Aaron Rodgers plays like Aaron Rodgers of 2020 or 2021 or something relatively close to that versus what he showed in 2022. Because if he doesn't, the Jets pretty quickly are going to be looking for a new general manager and a new head coach.